Assalamu alaikum. Um, hello everyone, how's it going? This is Ashraf Khalifa and this is day two of Global Entrepreneurship Week 2021. Um, so today's workshop, we are going to be doing entrepreneurship, learning styles and brainstorming. Um, let me just put it as a comment and then pin it so then people know um, what the topic is, all right? And we managed to um, overcome our technical issues. So what it turned out was, uh, apparently, in the library, there's like the children's section, there's the teenager section, and there's the adult section, there's the adolescent section. And I was trying to log into a children's section computer, which was why it wasn't allowing me to do nothing. Uh, but yeah, we're here, uh, a little bit late, but you know, Sudanese timing. Um, all right, so the good thing is also on the computer time limit. Now we've got one hour and a half, so hopefully we can do everything. Um, I might have another technical problem, which is okay. It seems like it's working. Just one second. Because apparently I've. Okay, give me just one minute because it's saying I don't have access on this particular account for that particular slide. Um, I've got the other ones, so if we can't access it or it's going to take way too long i think i might do what i did yesterday which is basically change which workshop i'm going to do um yeah i don't know so just give me a couple of minutes guys all right we've signed in let me just go to my drive all right once hopefully it works uh, give me one minute Okay, for some reason, doesn't want to load up that particular workshop. So, we are actually going to do a different one, which is going to be um, marketing, branding, and competitive difference. All right, so give me just one second. Let me write that down. All right. Yep, sorry totally to do this to you guys again. Like in the Salaha, you know, in business, this type of stuff happens all the time. In the real world, this type of stuff happens all the time. So, you know, you just got to go with it. You got to adapt. Um, that's part of what being an entrepreneur is and what entrepreneurship is. Um, yeah, so we're going to be doing a different one, which is marketing. I'm just typing it down for you guys. Marketing, branding, and competitive difference. Competitive difference. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna post it here, and then I'm gonna pin this one. So, yeah. All right. Come on. All right. All right. Miss me. So, when it comes to any yeah, marketing. And a big, um, a very important part is what the brand is, what the brand represents, and that's how a product is. When you're creating a product, it's about the brand, right? So the first thing that I always tell my students to do is to pick three business values, which will be the cornerstone of what their brand is, right? And then the whole point of marketing is how you show those like because normally in businesses it's three and people can and then it's usually i'll tell you like the three main things later but it's about showing your customers what the values are and explaining explaining them to yeah, to them and also at the same time the brand and the product has to kind yeah, of synchronize like for example we've got this the difference between yeah, any coke 
um, I don't know, my camera doesn't really want to flip. So uh, to be honest today, I think you're just going to be looking at my beautiful face. Um, but in terms of yeah, I need a Coca-Cola, you know what their brand values are, right? Um, and then when I talk about like the, the, the brand and the product like syn syncing up, so what I want you to think of like if you have a line, for example, and this line represents the price point, right? So if we, if we take like a uh, generic, actually no, like Coke, that's, that's a really good example, all right? So you've got Coca-Cola, which is carbonated sugar water. All right so if you look at the price all right on this line and then if you look at the different shops that sell that particular coke or you know soda water and different places where you can buy it and then how much those people charge for that particular item on that price so for example this side is lowest and then this side is highest in terms of the price right so for example like I'm gonna I'm gonna make it like Sudanese focused and and UK focused, right? So I'll start with the UK because that's where I live. So if you look at like Coke, for example, soda water, if you go to a place like Aldi or Lidl, you know it's probably at the lower end of the, the price. If you go to Tesco, Sainsbury's, that's maybe the next bit up. And then you've got like Waitrose, for example, or MS, which is definitely more like more for that particular Coke. Especially when I'm talking about if it's Tesco brand Coke and then Waitrose brand Coke and then M&S brand Coke and then you've got places like Harrods for example where you know the price is like that bit right or if you're in Sudan and you're missing in Yani and United Cola or the, or the Pepsi they would probably be at the high end you know if it's Coca-Cola coming straight from Dan or whatever right then you've got like other and you know it's a little bit less for example also the different places so for example if you're buying if you're buying it in Khartoum it's going to be different than if you're buying it in the Souq in, in Bahri or in Durman. also it's going to be different if you're buying from a supermarket versus an actual Souq um, but with Coke it doesn't really any yeah, yeah, display the analogy very well but I'll give you a better one which is milk the price of milk right so here it actually works quite well all right um, but in Sudan especially it works perfectly because you know you've got like in Lebanon Bidu Dal Humar it's a different price. In Lebanon Bitishterio in the supermarket Sayar Muktalif. In Lebanon Bitishterio min hit min Kapo Masalan Muktalif Shabid. In Lebanon Bitjibu min al Mizra Atawali Muktalif. So it's basically but the more important thing is about how you value your particular price and how it reflects your brand and your brand value. Because, for example, if I'm trying to sell this scarf, but I'm trying to say that my brand is, you know, quick, you know, and quick service, you get it, you know, nice and cheap, and my price is very high, it's, it's, it's not reflecting, right? Or, for example, if my brand here, Sudan Hub, for example, we've got... I'm trying to show prestige, I'm trying to show trustworthiness and if that price is not reflected in the brand then you're doing something wrong. So don't don't focus on what prices your competition are, are charging, focus on what the brand and the values you have and how you want people to see the brand right? and always be true to the price and be true to your own value. Even if you charge more, you know, yeah, I mean, sometimes being the cheapest is not the best. Sometimes being the fastest is not the best. Sometimes being exclusive is not the best. You know what I mean? But also, really think to yourself: like when I'm doing my marketing, does it reflect with the price of the the price point that I'm trying to push? Is it reflective of the, the customers and their demographic and their cash flow? All right. So it's sort of all about creating a story that's in sync, and that's really what marketing is. All right. So when it comes to defining your target market. You need to be able to describe in, in quite good detail who your market is, what your typical, sorry, who your customer is, like your typical customer, all right? So when it comes to the description, you need to know like roughly age, you need to know if it's a boy or a girl, you need to know how much money they make or salary, um, you need to know what type of lifestyle they live, um, you need to know definitely like what race they are, but more importantly, the more you can describe them, the better. Right? And when it comes to, yeah, in terms of 
how much disposable income or how much money they spend that's also another very important part but in terms of understanding your customers it's all about getting you know social metrics and this you can see in their social footprint their purchasing habits their yeah, the, the, the the currency demographics the revenue metrics their location so there's a lot of different things that you can input into your website which helps pull the data all right and then this gives you that big database but you need to understand your data right so it's, it's not like you just get data and you leave it and also it's not like you don't get data and you don't really know who your market is you know it's, it's all about figuring out who you're targeting how you can target them and then targeting them and then while you're targeting them getting the information about it you know so it's yeah, I mean, it's all about customer relationship management so each customer you need to know as much information as you can and then something very important for my especially my european but also my british um entrepreneurs because here there's something called data protection law so you need to be able you can't store anyone's data without their permission and also you need to be able to yani, have it in a secure and protected way but more importantly than that you need to be able to tell them exactly what their data is delete it if they don't want it if you want and if they want you to but also give it to them at a moment's notice so in terms of a lot of this stuff you have to be a little bit careful yani, in terms the library of, is now switching to open plus mode Please be aware that there is no longer any staff present. Yeah, so library's now uh, staffless, as they just announced that. Actually, they did it scare me, but, uh, um, okay. So it, again, keeping and appreciating your customers. So your customers are the most important thing. Without your customers, you, have, you don't have a business. All right, I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit so it's a bit more centered. Um, so this is done through customer relationship management and thinking about it all right so some things that you can do you can have like a customer loyalty scheme so for example a lot of coffee shops you know they give you a card or they give you a stamp after the ninth stamp you get a free coffee um loyalty cards especially here in the uk it's quite a big thing most places now have a version of a loyalty card and then the prizes can be different or 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 and obviously here people do the similar type of prizes but the more creative you can get the better um, discounts um, and then also try to make it a two-way relationship so for example like birthdays try to get reach out to people on their on their birthdays or any special like Mother's Day whatever and then try to get them to give you input or feedback and how you can do that how you can do better um, what I would definitely recommend is whenever someone buys something from you ask them how was the experience but more importantly how was the product you know and then people and yeah, a good customer service stays in people's minds and, and a lot of times people and yeah, they just take it for granted really um and they and if someone called me and was like oh how was the, the hoodie that you bought or how was the hat you got or how was this software that you bought you know you think about them a lot more and you definitely recommend them more to your to, to your friends but more importantly than that like it, 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 it makes them more professional, you know, it, it makes them more, it, it, in terms of the price, you'd be willing to pay them more the next time, or you'd be willing to more, to come back most likely, you know what I mean? So the chances of repeat business are quite quite high for that. And then also what is... And then Please be aware that library staff are now available. Okay, they brought the staff back, I don't know, it's weird. Um, but it's all about what you're going to do to get the customers and that's the main thing um, so it's about keeping appreciating and getting all right so those are the three core things about CRM um, when it comes to selling skills um, all right so unfortunately this is like an exercise that's like a little bit more you know you have to actually be in the room to be able to do this particular exercise which is taking turns to try and sell this new flavor of a particular coke to an owner of a you know small business or a shop so two people would come up and one person would sell to the other the other would sell to the other and then that way it's sort of like getting people to you know, step out of their comfort zone try a sales pitch um and you know experience how it is for doing it in front of other people but also yeah, I mean, different versions different styles 
Um, but the most important thing I can say about this particular slide, since we're not actually going to do it, unfortunately, is that you must not forget to close because that's the most important thing. A lot of times you show the product, the person, da -da 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 -da, but people forget usually, okay, so can I get the money then? Or they there's usually like a block. Like, I don't know what it is. Normally, we talk about it, we have a discussion, but most importantly, close that deal. Um, when it comes to entrepreneurship and business itself, there's a lot of different models. And um, most people, they just think business and think one, you know, one model, um, which is you buy something and then you sell it for more money. But there's actually different types of businesses. Right? So for example, one mechanism one method is the auction business right so you buy different products and then you put it and then you get people to bid on it so this way the price is pushed up and it's pushed up by the people rather than what you're determining right another particular business model is affiliate which is where like you either sell for other people and you get a commission or potentially you can only buy from your business if you're affiliated to that business whether it's like for example business to business or like you've got a loyalty scheme system um, which brings me to the next one which is like the loyalty business model as well which is similar to affiliate but it can also be its own thing um, and then you've got the beautiful one that everyone loves to hear about which is the multi-level marketing business model um, so this could be one of those beautiful pyramid schemes or it could actually be just a multi-level marketing business model, all right? And then this one, again, is kind of similar. In, it's kind of pyramidy, but this network affects business model. So it's all about if your network is great, then you're great. But bonus, it's not very pyramid level -y, but at the same time, it kind of is because you're kind of using people. Um, another business model is the online media um, content business, online content business model. So you've got like... If you're not posting or people are not engaging with you, then you're not making money. So that's a very different model. And then you've got the online media cooperative. So this one is like the the new age of media is becoming down this road. Um, but also cooperative is kind of separate. Um, so a cooperative is where people band together. Uh, in Arabic is what they call it, the Um And I want to give a shout out at this point to Al-Hayb Ta'i, Mulazmiyin from Durman. أنا لما كنت هناك السنة الفاتت يعني كان عملنا لنا التعاونية حقت حلة الملازمين. ف I learned what cooperative is in Arabic. But cooperative in English is like where people band together and in that way they you know benefit from like the strength of being together whether whether it's negotiating or whether it's getting cheaper prices or whether it's yeah, they're benefiting the community in other ways and and most importantly with the cooperative is that it's not profit driven it's um yeah and it's it's all about the benefit of the members um and then you've got another uh, another scheme which is the professional open source model so for example which one is the best model um, of open source i'll give you the perfect example because you know obviously when you hear open source you're thinking coding but the seat belt which was invented by volvo so volvo actually has got a patent on it and what volvo done was release the patent for free because you know it's about saving lives rather than money um but obviously there's a lot of um there's a lot of software it's like i think flash actually no flash is owned by uh, by oracle um wordpress for example is open source so people can go in change the code um update it um, kind of blockchain is kind of different, but you know it's kind of open source, so people can go in and 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 change, um, right? And then you've got a, like they've actually um, I've actually put it down as its own thing, which is the pyramid scheme model. But pyramid scheme could be, I and mean, obviously in a lot of places it's illegal, um, and also it's different from Ponzi scheme, which is definitely illegal. But you can also set up your business to be like a pyramid scheme business model type thing. Um, subscription based business model, which is trying to get people to subscribe. Uh, one of the funniest one and my, my best ones are the gym model, which is basically where you get people to sign up, but then you pray no one turns up because if everyone that is subscribed at the gym turns up, there's not going to be enough equipment. So it's like when you're building your business, you're, you're not building it in terms of the infrastructure 
to have full capacity all the time. It's all about getting people to pay for a service that they're not using all the time. So that could kind of be like the hotel model. Um, another one that's also um, used quite often and interesting is the razor and razor blade model or the vacuum vac and the vacuum pack model, which is basically you sell someone something quite cheap, which is or the printer. That's usually where people put it. Um, so you give them the razor, which is like a pound, two pound or whatever. And then the razor blades actually use the machine are like seven pounds. Right? Or for example, a printer is like what, 50 pounds or whatever. And the, the ink is like a ridiculous amount and it constantly, and that's for the rest of your life. So with this one, it's all about, you know, like constant revenue from a one-time sale. And that's, to be honest, like the ultimate. That's what most businesses are, are striving to do because with the customer retention, it's all about how much money each customer gives. But if each customer, you'd only have to deal with them once and then forever they're your customer that's like the best um, all right so now we're going to talk about how you will get your customers uh, just a little bit cold my bed and I as well. um <clears throat> what will you do to get your customers all right so you've got website you've got advertising you've got sponsorship you've got newsletter you've got word of mouth you've got digital marketing you've got newspapers you've got magazines all right um, so a lot of these link to marketing and all different types of marketing. Um, you can also do multiple things that I didn't put down, um, like you can make hats, car stickers, you can do leaflets. Um, but the most important thing is what are you going to do to get your customers? And even more important is what are you going to do to bring your customers back? Um, so you can always do like special deals, for example, like if you've got like Nesselen, you get two people, the third thing you Alright, so you've got um yeah, so I was saying like for example if you do you buy two, the third one is half price, for example, or like a deal that either incentivizes people to get more or incentivizes people to bring more. So buy like for example if you have buy one get one free meal or two for the price of one meal or whatever um yeah so just think about that and um and then think about the the branding especially so we're coming back to the branding um what so the the company values are the essence of your brand right and then how are you getting this this across right so when it comes to the brand itself the name of the, of the brand is very important the logo right? that the colors that you use and then the identity that you're trying to create and then the marketing and the strategy but they're all linked directly to that brand um, and then also make sure that you try to stay true to your brand values or if you're realizing that you're changing what the brand value is it's better to do a rebrand because it you don't want that message to get confused um, okay and then think about what type of advertising you will do right um, and then especially thinking about the modern age, the modern era that we're in, is it effective or not? Um, so I just want you to think about, for example, today in the last 12 hours, how many different adverts did you see? Or, and how many of those can you remember? You know, so it's like you're bombarded constantly, whether it's on the bus, on street signs, on on a poster, on a wall, um, constant different brands, and on TV, on the radio. But how many of those brands can you actually remember, or you think you're actually gonna buy? Or one minute, I've got um, a phone call. Uh, okay, um, I've put it on silence. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to go see my friend and then anyways complicated i'll deal with it later um, but, and then the other thing that i wanted to talk about the next thing i should say sorry um is sponsorship all right so with sponsorship all right so you need to think about what the sponsor is going to add to the table and then what are you going to give up in return all right and yeah and you try to make sure that the relationship is balanced you're both happy obviously in business you know not everyone is happy 
Um, and the second part is the giving up part is always very difficult. Um, so it's important to align yourself in, in terms of um, with the sponsorship to businesses that you you also value and share your values. Um, and then also make sure that you put like target based um, and like a specific fixed term of time. All right. And you can also put like penalty break points or, you know, to try to factor in like ways where you're protected, your sponsor is protected, um, and then also try to get more money up front as well. Um, and then in terms of the sponsor, there's like print sponsorship, there's ticket sponsorship, there's digital sponsorship. Um, there's a lot of other types of sponsorship. So, um, yeah, I mean, don't, don't just think, oh, like I need to get like, you know, on my website, all right? But there's different different ways, especially now. Um, obviously, as you guys know, I'm a big Man United fan. But Man United, like, they're really paving the way with what can be a sponsor. You know, like every other day, they're coming up with new sponsors. Like, they were the first people to get a sponsor for their training kit um, on their tickets. So, like, it's it's uh, it's a brave new world out there. And then, especially with the new apps and the new stuff, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of opportunities. Um, and then when it comes to the website, um, so yesterday we went into a huge amount of detail within the digital marketing workshop. So if you guys want to see it, um, also I put the um, lives already on, on my YouTube page, which is Sudan Printer. So if you missed it, you can either check it out here or on YouTube. Um, but we talked about what whether you really need a website or not. So think about that before you build it. Um, what is the website going to do? Think about that. Um, and then in terms of marketing and branding, so what does the website tell people about you? Right? What's the first impression and what impression does it give? Think about is that actually the impression you want to give or not? All right. And then when it comes to the website, the most important thing is content is king. All right. And then when it comes to content, traffic is the most important thing. All right. And then regular content is the crown prince. All right. So you've got the three most important people. So you've got traffic, content, and regular content, okay? So you have to update it and give people a reason to come back, okay? When it comes to digital marketing, again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but there's social media, there's email campaigns. Uh, I appreciate that. Okay. I love you so much. Thank you very much for commenting. And I'm glad uh, that you're finding my information useful. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is my favorite topic, which is entrepreneurship. So I'm glad you know, people are not only benefiting, but learning new information, which is good. All right, so you've got your social media campaign. So that within digital marketing is its own world. Um, so if you want to get... Because normally I do this workshop first, and then I do the digital marketing one. All right. But, yeah, you know... It's, we have to deal with life and it just comes as you um as it throws at you and you have to pick up the pieces and go right but there's the second part which is the email campaign which is uh, really really important and that's within digital marketing but it's very separate so email campaign is all about trying to build new leads so you're constantly getting people's emails and emailing them and emailing them offers deals updates stuff like that and then it's also like all about us like again marketing is a story so you're trying to sell them a story about your brand so try to highlight what things you've been doing um what things you want to do what partnerships you're trying to make all right and then you've got a separate newsletter which comes out like monthly every two months whatever all right so that's a separate thing and um and then you've got you know like podcast radio video type of marketing or digital marketing all right and then you've got crm which is customer relationship management which is another side and then you've got search engine optimization and pay-per-click which is about you know making your page appear higher up on google so you get more people seeing you and they google you um but unfortunately i'm not going to go through any details here this is an overview um all right and then that actually is uh, sorry, I'm going to call again. Um, that actually is the 
last slide right so I am going to see if anyone um, either has any questions that they want to ask me or if anyone wants um, to jump on because now on um, Instagram like, they allow you to have more than one person which is actually quite dope isn't it um, yeah so does anyone have any questions for me shout out to everyone well, I really do appreciate you guys okay while you guys are thinking of your awesome questions or your hard questions um, what I want to do you know to give you time to think about it all, is to give a shout out to my cousin Ahmed Al Fadi these awesome, 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 super duper hoodies that he painted and designed himself. So, um, matter cloth, cloth matter, I think it is matter cloth. Wait one second, I need to. Sorry if I get the name wrong, he will kill me. But you see, that's the that's the thing about business and and um, um, your brand and your business you know you need to try and make it in a way where and it, it sticks not just sticks with people but and it, with this one it's i think it's matter cloth yeah i'm pumped pretty um if it's not it's gonna kill me but what actually i can do is it's on the back so let me just see yeah matter cloth i was right you see so this is his logo Shout out Ahmed. Alright, so I don't know. I don't think you guys, from the looks of it, have any questions for me. Okay, so I will leave you guys there. And I will hopefully see you tomorrow. Um, to be honest, I'm not even going to say which one we're going to do tomorrow. Because it might not be the one that we're planning. Yalla jama. Assalamu alaikum.